Hey folks, Healer back again with a second article from the World of Warships development blog posted today, Thursday, September 24th. Yes, this is about the long-awaited Italian battleship Tech Tree line. Uh, this is a line that's been clamored for by the community for a long time. Uh, so I'm sure many people are very happy right now. Uh, Wargaming did tease uh, the line earlier this week in a stream, and then they had yesterday's video or watcher line video uh, that's been posted to YouTube. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But that was very brief mention of the battleships that they were coming. So I've been waiting for an article like this so I could get into some more specifics and detail and uh, rather than offer just pure speculation, at least I've got some data to work with. Uh, so the current line, at least as it's listed here, has seven ships starting at tier four. So interestingly, they don't have a tier three ship listed here. There were definitely uh, earlier or battleships that preceded the Dante um, Alighieri. I'm going to apologize to my Italian speakers. I'm uh, not going to attempt some names and I'll, <laughs> because, so I don't butcher them too bad. I'm still trying to uh, learn the correct pronunciation. But the Tier 4 battleship, there definitely were tier, uh, earlier um, battleships that preceded uh, what is going to be introduced for Tier 4. And all of the battleships from Tier 4 through Tier 8 uh, actually existed. So they were laid down, built, and actually saw action. Uh, the Tier 9 and Tier 10, I don't know if these are pure wargaming paper designs or these are based on some napkin sketches by, you know, Italian officers during the war. I, who knows? <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'll talk about their characteristics and offers my opinion about what some of these characteristics might mean in terms of their play style and so on. So the ships, like Italian cruisers, will ins uh, fire SAP shells instead of HE. Uh, these SAP shells will inf inflict very high damage uh, to weakly and moderately targeted or protected targets. Um, just a reminder that SAP shells can ricochet um, and they can shatter or they can penetrate, but they never over penetrate. So if they penetrate, they detonate inside the ship. And because the SAP shells for all of these ships actually have a higher alpha than their corresponding AP shells, uh, this line may go the way kind of like we see with the upper tier Royal Navy battleships where you just fire one shell type you know, 95% of the time. And in this case, it will be SAP because it will just be so good that unless you're firing, you know, like at a broadside battleship and aiming for the waterline where your uh, SAP shells will not penetrate the main belt, uh, you're probably rarely going to fire AP. That's just kind of my speculation. Um, I also think that the high penetration level of the SAP shells, and I'll get to some examples here in a moment with some of the specific ships, uh, means that destroyers for sure are like incredibly vulnerable to these, even much worse than uh, with uh, when facing Italian cruisers. And uh, cruisers, by and large, uh, will also be very vulnerable. The exceptions will be when SAP shells strike uh, you know, strongly angled, uh, you know, uh, main belts or something like that on cruisers, but the or or on battleships. But otherwise, these SAP shells are going to be very good at penetrating basically all bows, sterns, superstructures of all ships, as well as the hulls of most light cruisers and destroyers, and even some heavy cruisers. So the, I, it basically the bottom line is I think the shells are going to be very, very, very strong. The next unique characteristic of the Italian battleships is that they will carry the exhaust smoke generator, which is the same smoke that the Italian cruisers get. Now, because smoke firing detection ranges for these battleships are going to be considerably larger than their same tier cruiser counterparts, um, I think um, battleship players or players that play these battleships uh, will find that there are going to be quite a few cases that they will drop smoke and they won't disappear because there is an opponent that w is within their smoke firing range that will keep them detected. So let's say, for example, that a battleship fires or an Italian battleship fires her guns and then she drops smoke. 
if there's an opponent that is within the smoke firing detection range of the battleship, the battleship will remain detected even though it's dropping smoke. So I, I think it's going to be a learned practice for battleship players to understand the conditions when the smoke will be effective. And I think that we're probably going to see uh, quite a few battleship players ex expressing frustration, thinking that they should be concealed when in fact they won't be. Uh, and then there will be, you know, natural, you know, arguments of cheating or hacks that somebody can still see them even though they've dropped smoke, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll have to see how that works out. But I think that's going to be a potential consequence. Now, the uh, we have information for four of the seven battleships, uh, which I'm going to get to here in a moment. Uh, and they the, that information does show their smoke uh, detection firing range um, or their detection range when firing from within smoke. So you can get a sense for uh, what the ranges will look like. Uh, the next point is that it says there, uh, the ships will carry a large number of guns with relatively short firing range and not very good accuracy. Um, it's true that they have short firing range and not very good accuracy. And that goes back to the guidance here that they say that the ships will be most effective at medium range. That's true. The point on large number of guns really isn't true unless it's the tier 10. Uh, at least that's what we know. The tier 10 actually has 16 guns. Um, the other battleships that they've got listed here so far have a, uh, a more traditional number of guns, uh, either eight or nine, to, or in fact, in one case, 10. Um, so it's not particularly large. It might be that the tier nine uh, will have a large number of guns as well, but we don't have the details on that ship yet either. Um, so, but the key here is that the shot firing ranges are quite short, or in fact, they're very short for a battleship, and the accuracy is indeed not very good based on the current specifications. Uh, the secondary battery will have good accuracy, but short range. So the way I read good accuracy, and again, there's no specifications here, and I don't have any information for Wargaming. So, so this is just personal suspicion. I'm wondering if Wargaming is going to give them some sort of buffed out of the box secondary accuracy like we see with the u.s navy premium battleships like the the massachusetts uh, but the range is indeed uh very short even the tier 10 her at least per the current specifications her base secondary range is five kilometers which means if you max it out with aft and the secondary guns battery modification two or bot modification one and the Mike Yankee Saxa 6 combat signal, you're still looking at a range of only uh, 7.6 kilometers. Um, so it feels kind of gimmicky uh, because the secondaries aim for the middle part of a ship, which means that the secondaries and all the secondaries will still be HE. And I'm assuming at this point, they're not going to be one quarter penetration like we have for the German and uh, the, uh, the Royal Navy battleships. But um, it, the secondaries will, since they are such short range and they're relatively flat firing or very flat firing, they will tend to just hit belts, right? And that will mean that the secondaries might not do a lot of alpha um, unless they're targeting soft targets like destroyers or like cruisers um, and maybe some heavy cruisers. But uh, by and large, I think it feels a little bit gimmicky. So we'll have to see how that works out. This might be a play style where, you know, they can use smoke without firing and get very close to their opponents and then suddenly dump a barrage of main battery and secondary battery hits on something and then try to stealth away. I don't know. We'll have to see how this works out. Uh, the other next characteristic is they, they have, quote, decent concealment. Average maneuverability, which means both speed and rudder shift. Uh, quick turning turrets, that's definitely true. And rather good armor, although they haven't specified what rather good means. Uh, so I'm, the uh, Giulio Cesare and the Roma, uh, which are the two Italian battleships in game today, are actually quite squishy broadside. Um, they can be straight up deleted in a drive-by. Um, so what relative, you know, rather good armor means here. I don't, I'm not expecting turtle back arrangements like we see on the Germans or maybe even the French, but, um, we maybe some see something where their citadels are relatively low and they might take a lot of penetrating damage, but hitting citadels might be, might be more difficult because you have, they have to play at closer ranges. I don't know. We'll have to see how that works out. All right. So, uh, as I mentioned, there are details for four of the seven ships here uh, for the tier six, seven, eight, and 10. Uh, we don't have it for the four, five, or nine. 
Um, so it, for tier six, this is a, um, I believe this is a counterpart of the Giulio Cesare. She will have 10 320 millimeter guns. The firing range will be 17.2 kilometers. I expect that Im implies the any um, upgraded modules, so like the gunfire control system. So this is maximum range. Alpha on AP will be 9,700. Uh, velocity is very good at 830 meters. And the maximum shell uh, sap shell damage is 10,250 and the same speed. So I'm not going to go through every single specification for each ship, but I'm going to use this as an example. So the key here is that the SAP shell for all of these ships will have higher alpha than the AP shell. And as I mentioned earlier, unless you know that you're going to be firing at like a broadside battleship, maybe point blank range in a drive-by situation or something, I expect that 90% of the time these ships are going to be firing SAP because it's the damage reliability will be very high. And with very good shell velocity, in fact, it starts at 830 meters per second, which uh, for most battleships, even up to tier 10, is quick. And these are going to be flat firing. Uh, that is going to make hitting targets at least... Uh, or predicting lead is going to be uh, uh, quite easy. In fact, when we get to tier 10, I think uh, the, yeah, the SAP shell velocity is 880 meters per second out of the barrels, which is very fast for a battleship. Now it's not the 900 plus meters per second for some of these, you know, German and Russian cruisers, uh, but it, for battleship purposes, that is very, very quick. Those are very, very quick shells. So uh, coming back up to tier four, um, just to use as the example. So the next characteristic that we're going to see is that the reload time by and large is going to be pretty typical for battleships at around 30 seconds. The exception is going to be tier 10, which is 38 seconds, uh, at least per the current um, plan stats. Uh, and that's because she has 16 shells um, or 16 rifles uh, for the tier four, uh, for the tier six battleship. She, uh, her turret traverse will be 36 seconds for 180 degrees, which is pretty playable. Uh, all the rest that they've got listed here have a turret traverse time of 30 seconds, which is very quick for a battleship and basically doesn't require expert marksmen. Uh, the, the turret simply will keep up with the ship uh, very easily in a turn. Now, where the shells for all of these ships are, go or where the artillery for all of these ships is going to be quite notable, is that their dispersion is quite poor for their range, and their sigma is also poor. And again, keep in mind that all of this is the initial specification, so all of these are subject to change, and they will change because as testers get through them and Wargaming starts collecting data and understanding how these ships are performing relative to their peers, these numbers are going to get adjusted. So this is by no means final. Uh, but what I read here is that a 235 meter dispersion radius at 17.2 kilometers, that is quite a bit worse at that range for for contemporaries by and large. And the Sigma at 1.6 also in particular is going to be quite bad. The Lyon, which is the uh, tier seven uh, French battleship, her Sigma is 1.5. And the Pomeran, the uh, premium tier nine German battleship is also 1.5. And they're very shotgunny. So what the dispersion number means here is how big the el dispersion ellipse is. And then the Sigma signifies the statistical probability that the shells will tend to center into the, or, or the shells will tend to group into the center of the dispersion ellipse. So the higher the sigma, the more likely the shells are going to get closer to the center of the dispersion ellipse. Um, so by and large, these are going to be pretty shotgun, pretty shotgunny based on uh, the initial specifications. All right, uh, secondary armament I already talked about. The, the range is is pretty mediocre at best uh, or typical and actually uh, quite poor at best but apparently they're going to get buffed accuracy so we'll have to see how that works uh, aa by and large looks actually uh pretty stout uh across the board now one 
This is also true of the Italian cruisers, especially at upper tiers, is that their AA tends to be very uh, high um, continuous damage, but the range tends to be very, very short. And that's true here as well. So the, max, the current plan maximum range of AA for all of these ships is only 4.6 kilometers. And compare that with other ships that are well into the five kilometers or even six kilometers, uh, the, this is going to be very short range. So, but again, the continuous damage is going to be very high. So we'll have to see what carrier players think of the AA and being able to get attacks in on these, uh, on these battleships. Uh, maximum speed is okay for these ships. They tend to center in the upper 20s. There's one that's, I think, at 30 knots. Um, turning circles are also pretty commensurate. Uh, with uh, their peers. So I think that's uh, that's going to be pretty typical. Um, yeah, so that, so I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through the detail of each of these ships. Um, I'll leave the art, link to the article in the description below and you can go read through things in detail. But the, I'm trying to describe the overall characteristics uh, I think that we can expect of the ship. Let me touch on the tier 10 real quickly. So again, the tier 10, she will have a decent health pool, almost 90,000. HP base. She will have 16 381 millimeter guns. Oh, that's one of the thing I need to call out here is that the caliber on these battleships never gets above 381 millimeters. Um, so uh, I think that's probably to try to strike some balance on these SAP shell performance. But you can also see here for here for tier 10, the current maximum firing range is 18.9 kilometers, which is very short for a tier 10 battleship. In fact, it will be the shortest of all the tier 10 battleships uh, out of the box. Um, the SAP shell damage is gonna be shockingly high at 14,050, at least uh, this is the preliminary number. So think about 16 shells being fired on you, but also keep in mind that the dispersion is quite wide and the Sigma is very poor. So it, I think Wargaming is trying to make this so that you know, you're not going to be a long range artillery battleship. Uh, you have to get in relatively close, use smoke to sort of manage your engagements and be able to maybe slip in more closely, a little more easily, or be able to retreat more effectively. So we'll have to see how players find that they can use the smoke most effectively. And here we're uh, for the secondary armament, maximum range is five kilometers, as I mentioned earlier. So you can get that out to 7.6 if you were to build into a full secondary build. Uh, the the velocity of these shells, uh, secondary shells are very high. Um, so again, these are gonna be very, very flat firing uh, secondaries. AA, again, very high continuous alpha on, or continuous alpha on the um, AA, but the range again, maxes out at 4.6. Um, Speed here is 29.6 knots. I don't know why they couldn't just have picked 30, but, <laughs> but it is what it is. A uh, turning circle of 960 meters is pretty typical for a tier 10 battleship. It's not as bad as the Kremlin or the Core First, but it's uh, consistent with other tier 10 battleships. Rudder shift is 18 seconds. Uh, surface detection, again, this doesn't factor in camouflage or concealment expert or concealment system um, modification upgrade. Uh, is uh, 16.4 and um, yeah so this looks like a pretty uh, a pretty interesting line uh, and I think that they will have a I, it kind of feels like they're going to have a relatively high skill floor to make them work really well um, you know players are going to have to balance off being able to be close enough to reliably get shell hits but also not, you know, make themselves too vulnerable. Uh, we'll have to see how this works. So uh, that's kind of my in initial interpretation of the Italian battleships. Uh, again, I will leave a link to this article in the description below so you can go check it out yourself. Please let me know your thoughts and comments uh, about these ships in the comments below. And as always, we hope to see you out there on the virtual seas and we wish you happy sailing.